Welcome to Newark and Sherwood Museum Services. There has been a museum in Newark since 1912. The service is now based at Millgate Museum and at the Resource Centre, where artefacts from the 72,000 objects in the collection are stored in the best possible conditions. Millgate Museum itself is full of galleries and objects that tell the story of working and home life in Newark during the 19th and 20th centuries. The museum attracts many visitors, including school groups and families, every year. Over a period of four days, a group of young people came to look at two objects from the Civil War period, find out about them and create artwork based on them. We looked at a number of objects at the Resource Centre from Bronze Age rapiers, cannonballs to agricultural smocks. We spoke with Kevin Winter to find out more and concentrated on the siege map created by a royalist engineer when Newark was besieged by the parliamentarian. My name is Kevin Winter, I'm a collections and learning assistant uh, with Newark and Children's Museum Service. Uh, I've been involved with facilitating the Talking Objects project. Uh, the young people came to the Resource Centre to look at a couple of objects from the museum's collection. Uh, primarily the siege map from 1645-1646 and the uh, siege pieces which were minted as, uh, as money when the money ran out in the town. We met with Peter Dixon, who gave us an insight into what the sconce in Devon Park is about. He told us about the history of the area from Roman times, as the park sits alongside the Foss Way Roman Road from Lincoln to Exeter. As we walked around the park, we stopped at the information boards that told us what we could see within the different areas. The main focus was the Queen's sconce, an earthwork which was part of the Royalist Civil War defences and is shown on the siege map at the museum. We worked with Andrew Wynne and looked at a variety of fabrics and detailed textiles. We developed our own initial creative designs based around the siege map and siege coins, which we then developed further. Well, this is a really exciting project. Uh, I've introduced the group to uh, lots of new techniques, to foray, batik, printing, and we've looked at the artefacts from the museum collection. Well, we've generated imagery, really, using these techniques. Some of the images, we've used photocopied images and we've transferred them directly to the fabric. And they've used the hot wax, which has been applied to the silk, and then they've painted with dyes and built up layers and cracked the wax to allow for this kind of quite old look. But they've combined all these different techniques to make some superb designs, really. They've all been inspired. I've seen the way they've worked. They've been very enthusiastic. Uh, so I hope they've got some new skills uh, in textiles, in, in design, and that really they're just enthusiastic about generating ideas. I hope they'll take a, a newfound uh, love for history uh, and for learning about uh, the place that they live in and, and what it means to them. Uh, before the projects, I thought it'd be sort of mediocre. I wasn't expecting anything massive just to casually turn up and do what they expected. Um, it's definitely very interesting and very good. It's more interesting than I thought it would be. The experience has been very good because I've learnt lots about the um, Civil War. I've been involved in batik which is using fabrics. Um, I've learnt about siege coins and siege plans in the Civil War and the Civil War in general. Um, I most enjoyed doing the batik because I'm not, I'm not really a creative person but I do like working with fabrics and textiles. I enjoyed the most um, making material designs. Um, I most enjoyed um, making the art and getting along with everyone else. Um, I enjoyed working in a team and um, producing ideas for the final design and I enjoyed it a lot. I thought it's been really, really good and I'm a bit of, it's a bit of a shame that it's all over now. I wish it had gone on for a bit longer. 